you know, getting up on the roof seems really outrageous in some ways. And so, so what was the process? What was the organizational process to handle those those issues? That's such a great question. So one of the things that we are really sensitive to at Embark is that everybody is not neurotypical, mm -hmm. right? And so there is uh, this thing called demand avoidance. And so when you have somebody that's demand avoidance, hello, I am one of them too. It took me into my forties <laughs> and meeting other demand avoidant people before I realized I am also one, that it's not so, hey, get off the roof. Mm -hmm. It is, I'm going to make a request of you to get off the roof. And what we use at Embark is nonviolent communication. Hmm. So nonviolent communication, to boil it down to sort of a, a skeletal structure is four steps. So it's observation, feelings, needs, and a request instead of a demand. And the feelings that we feel are sort of that check engine light of something's up. I have a need mm -hmm. that's not being net met, right? So in this case, when he was up on the roof, it was, hey, I see that you're up on the roof. <laughs> you know, an easy observation, right? And I feel scared because I really value your safety and I have a need for you to be safe and for our community to continue. If somebody calls the police or if you fall and get hurt, that's, I mean, we care about you first and foremost, foremost but that, well, we're going to lose our liability insurance for sure. <laughs> and that will also definitely impact our reputation, right? So now I'm going to make a request of you to get off the roof, right? And so he did. It, it took him a bit, but he did get there. It, if I, I'm pretty sure if he were sitting here with me and I had said, hey, knock it off, get off the roof, that wouldn't have gone over as well as these are the reasons behind this request. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we work on, you know, pretty much there's, you know, conflict everywhere, right? And so being in a community, we, we navigate conflict. And so you'll hear, you know, you'll hear other people say things like, okay, I have a need for this, or this is a value of mine, and this is how I'm feeling right now. Can you please not yell so loudly or maybe not run through the hallway that way. So mm -hmm. that's how we do our conflict resolution process. So we encourage everybody to work it out on their own first. Mm -hmm. And then if that's not really working, anybody that feels comfortable being a mediator can be a mediator. So it's mm -hmm. not just staff that can mediate conflict, but it could be other people. So this person that I was just telling you about is a <laughs> well sought after mediator and and he does, you know, he does come to the table for it. And so, but there are other people that do it as well too. And then if it ends up getting bigger than that, then we do have a bigger meeting. And the meeting that we would have would be sort of a restorative justice style circle. So staff are there, the two people within the conflict are there, other members that want to be part of the conflict resolution that have been practicing it and studying it, but also people that are observers with what happened. People can mm. bring a friend with them. And then what we do is we have person A and person B. We don't have, you know, it's because everything comes from somewhere, right? It's not mm. black or white. And then we have people just like I was saying with nonviolent communication, do their observation, tell their story. And it's really hard to tell a story without evaluations or judgments. And that's, that's one of the things that, that we kind of have to swing it back around sometimes, which is one of the bigger challenges. But once we get through that, each person telling their story of what their experience was, and then saying, well, this is how I felt, because these are my needs, then we can get to that place of, how do we be in space together in our community? And we do that as a request as well. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.